Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Norwegian Animals. Now, today I'm in an Audi Q4 e-tron, or just the e-tron, e-tron's baby brother, if you will, or or Audi's take on the MAB platform. And we will take this out now on our route. We have 53% and 232 kilometers of indicated range, so it will be just fine. First impressions are very good. It looks and feels like an Audi uh, outside and inside as well. Of course, it's a little bit smaller than the, but uh, than the, uh, the big SUV. But it's also based on the on the MAB platform and kind of like the ID4. But to say it's a small car, that would be to lie, because that's not really the case. It's today, it's around 20 degrees, it's 18 and a half now to be precise. And uh, it's overcast, no rain, so we have pretty good conditions. Pretty good conditions. I've tried and looked around in the menu system here can't find anywhere to find the computer or or consumption i'm sure it's somewhere in there but i can't find it and i found it last time i drove the id4 but can't find it here keep on looking though this is the quattro version that's worth that's worth mentioning after all uh oh. Oh, I have to change. I'm driven wrong now. See, I got distracted talking to you guys. Yes, this is the Quattro version. So it has two motors, one on each axle, and it has around uh, 300 horsepower. I would imagine the torque figure would be around 400 newtons, somewhere maybe a little bit more. It feels quite quick enough. Yes, uh, the normal cars on this platform has rear drive and 205 horsepower, so there. But, and you can feel it. This is quick, whereas the uh, the 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 single motor variants are mildly brisk. Um, yes, there's always a Toyota, isn't it? Every time. Well, some politicians are uh, decided that we can get a few test, test stretches of 120 km top speed motorways here and people are worried, oh my god, people are going to drive faster, they're not, but because you're going to stop in one of those, because they're always in the way dwindling about, I mean, it's that It's not as quick as my car, clearly not, because I have a lot more power. But it's not a slow car either, it's plenty to do safe drive-bys like that and, 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 and so on. It feels not quite as quiet as I remember the ID4 to be, but good. Entertainment system, but I mean, it works most of the time, and you can ask it to navigate to Berlin, and it tells you where to charge, and how how far you're gonna stay, and what you're gonna, the percentages you'll arrive with, and you know, the world has moved onwards, and then this, and with the VW groups backing it, probably you can have a roaming chip as well, so you can just travel with one. Uh, RFID on there instead of a thousand, and that's a big, big step forward to the use of frontless of electric vehicles. Let's face it, unless you have a limited range, you do need to stop and charge sometimes. And of course, the Ionity network is is also constantly getting better and bigger. Um, I do have my doubts about the uh, need for an 800 volt architecture, but hey, Rebecca has to make their money somehow. 
this is not about 800 volt architecture no. this is about the Q4 it looks nice on the outside it looks like an Audi so there's no surprises there on the inside it looks like an Audi and there's even less of a surprise there actually oh yeah oh yeah you can lose your license in this one as well but unlike the, its big brother this can actually uh, region and it can I can understand how it can region. I never got that region to work very much in its big brother. This one does and I, it's, it's very easy to do easy to use as well. Um, I like this car. I'm not a big fan of the manual system but that might be that might be me not necessarily the car. Uh, if if I uh, if I wanted uh, the car on the MAB platform it definitely would have been either this or the Skoda. The, the ID4 has its instrument cluster on the uh, steering column or at least it's adjusted with the steering column so you never have to worry about where your steering wheel is relative to your sight line through, the th through it. This one does, neither does it in the Skoda. So, so if you put your steering wheel, if you want it lower, well you can't because you can't see your instruments and so on. And that's a... <laughs> it's not necessarily, is it? It's not that difficult. I mean, Porsche did it in the 928 from the 70s. Take, you know, region is it something good? Yeah, it's good enough. You just put it in brake mode, and there you have it. And then, then you have the plus minus buttons on the or, uh, paddles on the or on the steering wheel to to adjust it up and down. Uh, yeah, uh, the speakers here are from Sonos. Same people that delivered my my speaker in the <laughs> what I have I have, have at home. So they're good. They're not quite as sharp or as open or as brilliant as 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 as, as others, but they clearly they're definitely good. And uh, like my Tesla, it has a few rattles in the in the. Um, in the HVAC system somewhere, something is rattling in there. Just a slight rustle, really. You wouldn't, you wouldn't notice it if you ever have some radio on. There we have... We don't actually, we need to back up a little bit. There, 2,280 kilos. Oh, 2,300 kilos. But that's with one man in it, so one big man, so that's 100 kilos off. Uh, 2,200, that's actually not really that bad. What do you say about the uh, space in the car? Well, there is no frunk as per MEB usual, because the VW simply can't be bothered to package it properly. But of course they have two other platforms. And they have a frunk in it, so you know if you want the frunk, you buy the big brother or you buy the Taycan e-tron GT. They don't cost the same, but you know, all, the, all intents and purposes and so on. Um, there's space in the back seat, it's actually surprisingly alright. I can sit behind myself. Um, not with a lot of space left to my knees, but it works, and there's plenty of headroom. And you have your own climate zone back there, um, and your own, um, you know, cup holders and stuff. So it's, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And one thing with the ID is, see, I find somewhere else, it's not quite as silly as I thought. This absolutely silly turning circle. I mean, it almost turns 
around its own legs, almost. It's, I mean, come on Tesla, this is for the drive to give us Europeans something we really need. We have cities that are a little bit older than last week after all. Speaking of interior, interior quality, the ID3 particularly had rather lousy, it does with hard plastics and stuff. But that said, the ID, the iX3 from BMW, BMW also had some truly atrociously cheap, terrible plastic sometimes, as, as I'm sure I showed you. Now, this one is a bit better. This is not only minimalist plastic, but it feels alright. This is a rubberized compound, so it is, and that's okay. It doesn't feel up up market, but it doesn't feel cheap and tacky either. Uh, this is all right. The door cards is all right. The inside of the grab handles are still atrocious plastic, though. But unless you scratch on them, you don't really notice. Um, and the seats. Oh, the seats are really nice. They're big and room. They're well bolstered, so to keep it in place without being snug. Um, of course, this this bit can be a little bit dominating and such a and gives gives the impression that there is less space in there in here than there, there actually is, which is a bit sad. Manual system, which is it is what it is. This ADAC is very easy to use. So, yeah, actually, you can, you can, you don't have to put, you have to use this. You just leave the car and then the car locks itself at some point. I like that functionality. I like it a lot. You don't need the on off buttons. Those stalks are also of atrocious quality, but. Uh, you don't really notice in daily use. I mean, the stocks in the Model 3 is also quite cheap, and I don't really care. Um, the buttons on the steering wheel are actually proper buttons, but they're also touch, so you can sort of screw, screw all around to move volume and stuff up and down. And it, it works, it's okay. I wish they had a dedicated uh, play pause button though, because then I don't have to stretch all the way over here all the time. It's not a big thing, but it actually is very nice to have that on the steering wheel. Uh, of course I had to hit the steering wheel and stuff, and that seats up very nice. And it stays hot even quite a while after you turn it off. It's a slight delay when you... It's not that far off the pickup that you get in a Tesla. Not as easy to model it, of course, but still. It picks up and goes. And that's good, that's good. We're uh, now at 28%. Uh, have um, 128 kilometers of indicated range. And we're about halfway. So, yeah, we'll do fine. We've, we've used 25% roughly so far. And remember, this this whole round trip is only 150 kilometers. So that gives it the real world range of 300 kilometers and fully charged easily. Good as the MAB platform is, and, 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 and dedicated as the VW Group undoubtedly is, remember they have three dedicated platforms. No one else has that. Um, not even Tesla, at least not yet. They have two, they have the uh, SX and the 3Y. And, uh, of course they're all uh, very, very efficient and all that stuff, but still, VW is really pouring money and resources into this. And they have money and resources, unlike... The only one who can really touch them is, is Toyota. 
you know, they, they don't give two cows about this, so yeah, we know where that's going to end. Ten years from now. Playing catch up. Playing catch up to test out, playing catch up to full to VW is incredibly hard. Not impossible, it's just very, very demanding. Electric, 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 electric. <laughs> I mean, you always get this in this country, how incredibly used we are, it's just the Tesla, it's just jag, it's, who cares, because it's dealers everywhere. And you come to any other country in the world, with the possible exception of Netherlands, it's like, people still don't know what a Tesla is, or what an electric car is, or that it doesn't have an engine. Wait. Good morning. Oh, I was home at the... Um, Far too late yesterday. It was around 11 o'clock in the in the in the late late in the evening of the night. In the live of the car now. And this in the beginning it was like okay the car is okay, but the more you drive it, the more you realize that this really has the character of an Audi. Um, it's ferocious. It, efficient and teutonic and it just sticks to the road and it's quick it does not to 16 6.1 seconds which is not slow not that fast either but on the, when you're on the roll you have the punch to do what you need to do and um, level of refinement you really forget that this is a kind of, it doesn't feel small or cheap or cramped in any way and, and it, it has the power and effortless, effortless go. And a level of refinement when, when it comes to, to, to NVH, it's, 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 it's really, really good this car. There's a bit of wind noise coming through from the roof, but the far from, far from that is really quiet and it's very comfortable. Uh, so I'm very, very happy that I got to borrow this one from uh, from Dallas at Twenty Three Sixty. They, um, yeah, it was actually fun yesterday because they had all the cars lined up, all the both the big. E-Tron and the GT, which actually looks rather decent in some colors. And then you have this. It's, uh, I really like this thing. It's not perfect. But I like it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You find your way around it eventually, and it's uh, it's if you're driven an Audi, you know how it all works. It all falls to place, and you can, unlike BMW, you have an instrument cluster that you can actually move about and and, and design as you want it to, and that is good. The rest of the car is easy to use. It really is uh, a good product. And um, any car that you just want to drive, I think that's a good compliment. Probably one of the highest compliments you can give a car. Um, uh, it is the price. This is not a cheap thing. I think this, 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 it's costing around five hundred and forty thousand Norwegian kroner. Uh, at 400 and something with the four wheel drive and stuff. So, it's not cheap. I'm glad the uh, the, the, the VW group is uh, clearly showing a commitment to building good, properly good electric cars. Because I was on the road for hours yesterday and I had, I had a few small stops and I had one charge stop. And that lasted for about half an hour or there, about 33 minutes or something. And then I was from 10 to 76%. And then it was just off for another uh, three or four hours again. And yeah, 
If you need more than that, then you have to buy something else. But that's plenty for most of us. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. And uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye.